Hey, that rhymes. Good job, man. I know. Now it. I've blown it. Hold on. Dang it. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, now it's recording. That was weird. Oh, I don't want to think about why that did that. All right. In three, two, one. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> Hold on. That was really quiet. <laughs> I'm already dancing, but it was quiet. Try that again. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Core. This is Core. C O R E. Core gamers, give us a listen. Or if not, that's fine too. We're not really uppity about it. We just like the name. We kept it from its previous incarnation. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. My back hurts. Welcome to the show. I'm Scott Johnson, Bo Schwartz, John Jagger joining me. We're here to talk about video games, what we played this week, some predictions about BlizzCon, and a bunch of other stuff. If any of that sounds really interesting to you, then sit on down. Uh, get us get a drink a beverage and listen to us pontificate for the next hour or so uh, how are you guys John you're doing all right tonight everything good yeah I'm doing fine yeah. hey how are you well I'm here's my only big bummer of the day uh -huh. when I left it was four o'clock my time after an in the afternoon to go teach this uh, class at the University of Utah they wanted me to come to speak to a class that's all about streaming and content creation so I went up there to do that had a little presentation even talked about core a little bit and uh, the, uh, uh, what was I going to say about that? I forgot. Oh, uh, as a result, I missed the, uh, the launch window, like the minute that the Outer Wilds went available, which was right the at Outer 5 o'clock. Outer Worlds. I did it again. Gosh, dang it. Those two names. Couldn't they have called each other? It just said, look, guys, <laughs> can we just not do this? Anyway, uh, right before that was a thing I could do, I had to leave. So I've been gone, and the whole time I was gone, I was thinking, Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds, I want to be playing it. My friends are playing it. Why am I not playing it? Because I'm telling you right now, based on the reviews I've heard and the conversation around that game, 100% into what that thing's going to be selling me. So after we're done here tonight, I'm going to spend some time in there. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah. And it's uh, on the Xbox Game Pass, so if you have it, you can just play it. Yep, you just play it, which I do, which is how I'll do it. Uh, but that's uh, great news, especially, <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if Bethesda could have had worse timing, uh, on there deciding to charge everybody a hundred bucks a month or a hundred bucks a year, excuse me, to, uh, <laughs> to basically, the timing is the least of those problems. <laughs> yeah. But to basically subscrub to, uh, to scrub, to subscribe, subscrub. <laughs> I've been, I've been talking in front of a class all night. My brain's not a hundred percent here. Oh, that's um, truly epic. It was crazy. But anyway, they, they want to charge you to have like a membership to give you some perks. And the timing of that is kind of bad because it, as it turns out, um, Obsidian, who made one of the greatest RPGs of all time, in my opinion, which was Fallout New Vegas, is uh, launching a brand new game that is very much kind of a marriage of that, some Mass Effect things, uh, their own little uh, twist because Obsidian kind of makes their own kind of games. They, they have their own feel. But they're making one of those, and it's launching right around the time that you launch your horrible idea for $100 a year to run your freaking 76 community into the ground. Bad timing, Bethesda. Bad timing. Maybe that was some white suit guy that made that call. I don't know. But it's dumb. Uh, good luck selling any of those. And you know what? They had a bunch of goodwill built up. This is a little bit like Blizzard. They had Classic launched. And everybody's happy, and even people who aren't playing it are excited, like me, that it's out there and it's happening. It's up number one on streaming. It's going great. And then suddenly they have all their other problems, and now all that goodwill just burned. It feels like that with, with Fallout 76 in that over the last, I don't know, eight months, they've been hammering away in that game and in introducing improvements to the point that as of last week, I was actually considering finally getting the damn thing because it sounded like it was in shape. It was finally a thing I might enjoy. And then this happens, and now I'm just kind of put off of it. So, well done, game industry. You're good at this with your weird what is, announcements. What is that game anyways? Is it Battle Royale game? Which one, 76? Yeah. No, it has a mode that's like Battle Royale. It's some kind of, I forgot the name of it, Frozen Tundra something, Donkey mm -hmm. Lips. I forget the name. I'm sure that's it. Rose of Thunder Donkey Lips. <laughs> Something like okay. that. But it's kind of a mode that's like that, but you don't have to play that mode. It's basically like co-op sort of... Is that the right word? Co-op co uh, uh, Fallout is the idea. Not really mm -hmm. interesting to Weird. me because 
Uh, the idea is that you're one of the first vaults to open. There are no NPCs in the world yet. There's a few robots. Uh, you just got to go out there and find stuff and build stuff and like make. It's kind of survival gamey and all that. Um, but now, okay. at the, up to this point, they're actually starting to introduce the traditional Fallout RPG mechanics into the world. There are NPCs either there or coming with the new update that are all about more world exploration and quest stuff and all that. I mean, it sounds like it was really shaping up to be something cool and communal. And the community who's already there, you know, have, have been sticking by this thing. And then they announced this, like, weird subscription. Like, I, I understand if this was like four bucks a month or something. But for twelve ninety nine plus or or a hundred a year, what are you even doing? Like I don't know if I even understand it at four ninety nine, honestly. Like let me let's roll it back. Fallout seventy six didn't set the world on fire, and they're only by all accounts just getting up to be a reasonable little thing. To turn around and say, Give us mo more money for this game. No. Mm -hmm. Why? Yep. <laughs> Why should we do that? Why is that a thing we're gonna do? Uh, yeah, especially I, at this price and furthermore on top of that in following with true fallout 76 style the new feature they just put in is broken yeah doesn't yeah. work yeah it doesn't work so it's just a okay. mess it's just a mess the game launched a mess. Devil's advocate a little bit though like all freemium games have the whale options right like i mean it's not for people, hey, jump in and now pay 13 bucks. Isn't it for the people who love the game? You know, and I guess I'm seeing they don't really like it, but I'm like, you know, Warframe will charge you like $40 for a premium skin, no problem. And you'd hear zero complaints. So I'm just wondering why we're picking on well, Bethesda all of a sudden. Partly because it's not a free <laughs> like, game to start with. Whereas, like, if you if you play Warframe, that oh, it's game's not? free for it's no, not free to play. No, 76 is a retail game, a fully priced one. And then, really? and then you, yeah, and then you play it. Yeah. And now this is their way I really way don't of... care about that game. I have no idea what's going on with that game. Though. Right. It's very weird. I mean, I honestly, I, I, so this week I did play a bunch of New Vegas in preparation for mm -hmm. Outer Worlds because I wanted to kind of get back in the Obsidian RPG world. And man, that game is freaking great. I'll probably keep playing it after I'm done with Outer Worlds. Like I, I got back in and went, all right, this is good. And now there's like mods for like new textures and HD everything and you know the game's ten years old. looks looks way better with those mods. Anyway, uh, so I'll probably do that again because it's such a freaking great game. And John, you should finally play it, even though there's deserts. I'm telling you, it's the best. It's the best Fallout game. Well, just, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, Scott. I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not I should play Fallout New Vegas when we talk about the Outer Worlds later <laughs> in this episode. Oh, okay, fair enough. So anyway, uh, point is, it just seems tone deaf and dumb and a weird move but also i think the reason people vote back to your devil's advocate standpoint the people who are angry about it are not so much angry as they are super disappointed because they think this is probably just kind of the future of fallout and that's a bummer because fallout like skyrim before it or the elder scrolls before it uh or fallout 3 uh, they were they were big sprawling single player triple a titles that didn't try to figure out how to put all these modern trappings like, you know, free to play model or, or I guess, you know, uh, microtransaction stuff so at the back add. end. Yeah. Right. Or, or even multiplayer like that idea on, uh, in some heads might be, Ooh, multiplayer fallout. That sounds awesome, but it's not really an MMO. It's not really a, uh, you know, it's not destiny. It's some weird thing. I don't know. I just think it's a misstep and, I hope they can still one day show me that Fallout still still matters beyond this. So, so I don't know, but uh, I like Fallout. Fallout's good. I like Fallout. Anyway, uh, so that's going on. We at least should mention it. And then the bigger thing going on is BlizzCon next week. We have BlizzCon, so we're going to talk about that. And then we will talk real briefly here about Fallout seventy six, or sorry, uh, Deathwing coming to Heroes of the Storm. I read that wrong, because that's kind of cool. Deathwing, you know, giant dragon. Uh, we thought it would be an event, or at least I did, and now it's like literally a dragon, and he's big. He's a great big dragon. So I have lots of things to say about that. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, but for now, let's talk about this. BlizzCon next week. Here's the deal. They got four stages with unknown topics as part of the schedule, because they finally released the schedule, right after the keynote. Now, if I... Let's just do the basic math in our heads. Diablo 4 seems like a given. All right? Sure. One of those panels is probably that. 
uh, new WoW expansion. Probably one of the panels. Or at least this is just what my cursory brain said when I first saw it. Third one, the rumored and sort of leaked Overwatch 2 and or Overwatch PvP type game, whatever it's going to be. Uh, or PvE, rather. Or did I say that? Maybe I did. Yeah. Um, I don't know how teachers do this every day. Seriously, my brain is squashed from all of that talk. Anyway, then the fourth one, no idea. New IP, uh, freaking, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. And maybe none of those things. Maybe this is all four crazy new things or four separate panels for the same big event, like everything for uh, Diablo 4, and there's just four big major panels for it. Like, I don't know what to think of this. So let's send it around the horn. Bo, do you have any predictions about what those four slots are for or any of this? I think it's everything that we think it's going to be, right? I mean, there's a war. There's definitely Warcraft 3, like, remaster happening. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's that's got to take up some time on the stage. A whole panel right after Keynote, though, do you think? Do you think it's big enough for that? I mean, it just depends on the scope of the game. Warcraft 3 is a pretty large game, right? Well, like, I mean, we know Warcraft 3 exists. There's no reason to say secret coming soon panel about a game we already know exists. So I, I would say it's all but certain that's not one of the coming soon panels but it will take not. up time in the in the really i agree for with a, a blizzard game like every blizzard game special that's got to be one of them i mean maybe no, right? it's just no a, it's we just already a know remake. it exists if yeah. it's well, a look. secret like oh good point because on the schedule it shows as you're right it's a secret on the schedule so if they and since we already know about what reforged why wouldn't they just put the name down if it was one of those panels because right. we know about it already. I don't know, because it's... <laughs> I just I, I don't know why they would... Because it would count as an announcement of something, probably. Mm. I mean, I thinking. think they talk about it in the main stage show, but I, I think... I'm, I don't I'm think it's last one of year. the Last year was on the main stage it. as an announcement. Yeah, that's There might true. be a new cinematic, or... I mean, who knows? I think they're going to launch it that weekend. I, keep, I, I know that seems crazy, but I think Immortal and... War, uh, <laughs> they... They swapped Immortal for Warcraft. <laughs> I, I think they're both. I think both of those things are getting released that weekend. As a and guess what? It's available now. Like I think they. I think they get a lot of goodwill that way. Whether or not anyone believes it or not, but I think that's a good. I mean, idea. I think that that's likely to be there. But I mean, because we know so much this year versus other years. Like I, I just feel like yeah, for sure Diablo Four, for sure the Overwatch thing. That's two. Yeah. We technically don't know about that stuff, right? Nope. Not, like, not you know, for We sure. do, but not officially. Right. So that leaves two other projects. Yeah. I think one of them is Warcraft 3. Um, and the other one is... I don't know. Maybe they're doing some funky with Hearthstone? I, let's just... Like a, what are the odds there's a brand new game coming from them? Possible new IP. A lot of people have floated that. Actually, let's just talk about that for a second. What do you think the chances are of a new IP? My personal feeling is that they wouldn't do that because this will be the oh. Diablo 4 event and that next year they'd have very little in the way of new stuff. So that would be the place to give full stage and effort to something that's new, brand new IP. That'd be my take. What, a, what do you think? What a, oh, sorry, what about the World of Warcraft expansion? Aren't we due for the new Oh, yeah, that, that'll happen too. That's why I was saying if there's four. That's three. So that's three. It's the fourth one I don't know about. Can't find a thing to stick there. So just to kind of, because I was curious about it after Bo mentioned it, I thought, well, let's go and take a look. They actually do list Warcraft 3 Reforged Update, which is going to be between 3 and 4 on the second day of BlizzCon. Okay. So it does give the name of the, of the thing on the schedule. Okay. And there, there's a Warcraft three mention on the, on the schedule. Yes, but it's late in the day, so it's not right after the uh, the intro, which is usually where okay. You do so your let's say, let's following. accept that argument that we know about Warcraft three, so it's not a, a surprise thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, this is a dumb idea. Well, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't. I thought it was all accounted for in my head. That's why I was like, "Yeah, it's probably not going to be a surprise." Oh, now I want to hear what um, you're thinking. I mean, do you think it's <laughs> it's like it's going to be like a, their own cryptocurrency or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> blizz bucks some... blizz bucks finally uh, blizz bucks yeah blizz bucks i like it get your blizz uh, bucks I, now i mean i don't know it, it's hard i guess they're focusing more on mobile games right mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, that's what we've heard, but but ever since so Immortal... We get, a, we get another mobile announcement. Yeah, but ever since Immortal, I feel like that, that info pipe has shut down. Nobody talks about mobile anymore since last BlizzCon because of that mess. And so I think... I don't know. I think if they're going to do a new IP, it might be a big full-blown core IP. But you give that to, to full stage next year. Like, that becomes your big thing of the next year. Like, the, the idea that they could even do Diablo 4 and a new Overwatch project and a new WoW expansion all on the same stage this year is a pretty full plate. That's a lot. But to me, Diablo 4 is... And maybe I'm just going sort of in older days, like back when StarCraft 2 was new... I feel like we get an announcement and it's still two years out. Right. Right. So we're going to hear about it, but you know, right. I, I don't think we're going to, I don't think it's a, we're going to get Diablo four this year. Really? I don't think we're, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to get it in 2020. Oh, you mean the game? I mean, no, we'll the get ga the game. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I think yeah. we get an announcement. So that's why I'm like, how I many are they going to pull a riot? And then maybe it's a new animated series. Maybe they are working. Oh. We haven't had any Overwatch shorts in a long time. Maybe somebody over there is finally like, yeah, let's pull the trigger. Dude. And it's because they used to have a slot for Warcraft movie. What if they decided, yeah, movie studios are, it's too much of a pain in the butt sort of working with them. So we're doing an in-house deal. And what if it's a remote satellite of this? Hello, China. I am Mike Morheim, CEO and co-founder of Blizzard Entertainment. What if it's that? <laughs> <laughs> what, is it, what would we call Mike's uh, Chinese travelogue? I, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, China. <laughs> I'm going to be the stick in the mud on the predictions, but I have a reason for it, and I think it's a good one. Lay it Last on me. Last year, yeah. I remember, Scott, you and I sitting there in the audience together, mm -hmm. and we went in absolutely dead certain we were going to get a diablo 4 announcement yep i was sure oh it's got to happen it's gonna happen it's this is the one thing we know and at least we're going to get that and it didn't happen mm -hmm. and so as much as i want to say that it's going to be all these great things i i can't bring myself to do it i need to i need to get blizzard a win even if it forces me to give them that win i need them to have it so I'm going to go in and say Diablo 4 again. Overwatch 2, I'll go ahead and say, because honestly, if they announce it or they don't, I don't care either way. You do if it's a cool PvP or PvE thing with like some kind of rad co-op deal. You do think you do care then. I don't know. Maybe. It depends. It depends on what it is. If it's just we took the shooting and all of that from Overwatch and we built a PvE thing around it, no, not okay. really. What, what if I kind of already played that. It what, was fine. What if it goes so far as to like take us into de not destiny, you know, destiny like territory, a loot shooter uh, where we are have a big, big stories, lots of open world stuff, a hub. Like, what if that's the game? You're more that excited. That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm all about that. But the problem is, and the thing that I always come back to when I think about what are they going to do with Overwatch next, is they sold Overwatch on the check out these characters. Yeah. So if you're going to do a sequel to Overwatch, you kind of have to use those characters in a smart way. If you say, well, you're going to be somebody else entirely. You're going to be Scrub, this new guy, and yeah. you're going to be running around. Right, scrub. Yeah, if you have a cool reason to interact with those characters, maybe that's okay. That's one thing, but are people really excited about that when you sold Overwatch based on the characters? If you're going to do a big PvE thing, what do you do? How do you pick from that roster who people play as? Are you going to pick four characters that they can play as? Mm -hmm. More likely, what they're going to do is take the full roster, or at least close to it, and build a pve mode for them to run around in i have zero interest in that okay how about well, this why, wait okay go why ahead, you just make your own characters why does it have to well be named and that's and, okay so bo's on the road i'm on what if and i said this a couple years ago because oh i'm not supposed to say that okay never mind i never oh. heard anything from anybody but i'm telling you let me tell you this it's a close call how can i get around this without making it sound bad Okay, you know how <laughs> Titan came and crashed and they gave up and they and then out of it came Overwatch? Do you remember that? Yeah. There was some thinking. <laughs> Not, I, okay. It was supposed to be an MMO. Yeah, no, I know that. But what I'm where saying... Where you made your own character and you ran around right. in that universe. Right, so right. So it doesn't seem crazy to say 
we're now going to flesh that idea out further. Right. And that's the, I had semi confirmation of that idea. I won't say from who, but here's how it basically worked. The comparison was Warcraft three needed to happen before a Warcraft MMO could happen. Does that make sense? And that, and that there was some thinking that Titan was trying to do it all too fast, too much, too all at once. And then again, this is hearsay, but that the idea was that maybe we reset (laughs) and now overwatch one is basically Warcraft three in that, in that, uh, in that concept. And that there's whatever's next is a huge fleshing out of that. Maybe not full MMO, but something much more. It could be Titan. Ish. I Titan think Jr. you're safe, Scott. You don't know what they're going to announce. I don't so know what they're you, going to announce. You're free to speculate. You have no idea. Well, the only reason I heard that is because somebody told me inside they're not even there anymore, and I don't want to. I just, I, I'm just tiptoeing around it a little bit because I don't want to get in trouble, or them in trouble, really. Sure. But, but what I'm saying is that that was even some of the thinking, and and that's part. And think about it. If you're on that team and you're like. You know what, guys? Let's reset. Let's do. Let's work on really solid mechanics. Let's make a really fun game. It'll be a shooter because we were aiming to have this be a shooter. Like you could see that. Like let's get it back to that that basics, and then let's build it out from there, which is kind of what they've always done. So it makes it's actually more of a Blizzard way to get the job done than someone dying. What's the what's the the police are everywhere? <laughs> Sorry, it's that's, really that's not me. Here. There's a ghost in here. <laughs> we're gonna need to I, just pretend that it's halloween and these are halloween sound effects because it's really windy it's not me it's not me it's me it's 100 percent. oh it's you that's wind yeah it's wind. sounds like police sound like for uh, the hot hot phoenix wind the problem with where my apartment sits is it it creates a natural (laughs) wind tunnel it sounds like there's somebody (laughs) cleaning your windows right now it goes howling past the window really loud i feel like i'm in a graveyard it's great well look out the window and then say hello china all right anyway china you you know you know what that sound sound is that sound is spooky yeah hold on john do that one more time you sound just like do it again do it let me hear it again okay i'll play it for you again the top whoops i am no that's not hold on Oh my gosh, it won't let me reset this. Pit. Morheim, CEO and co founder okay. of Blizzard Entertainment. Right, let me start that over. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting Sorry, it over. Mike, if you're listening. All right, here we go. One more time. Ready? Here goes. Hello, China. Hello, China. Oh my gosh, you have the same voice as Mike Morheim. <laughs> oh, why don't you, let's call, let's get Blizzard on the phone. Let's call Blizzard right now and just say, hi, it's Mike. Can you remind me what game we're announcing it's doing? <laughs> 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 like and by the way, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't want listeners. I don't want the listeners or chat room to be acting like something was spilled here bad. This is like 2013. I heard this. This is very old news. Okay, so it's irrelevant information. Yeah, it's it's and it isn't. Oh, and some people are going to go. Oh, it's Metzen. It's not Metzen. It's not. I'm just saying that makes sense, doesn't it? That they would start with here's your core. Now let's blow that world out to a bigger thing. Maybe this year yeah, we get like, that bigger thing. But that seems like its own BlizzCon. Like that's a big deal, you know. And and, and Diablo Four is a big deal. So, okay, our thinking so, that so, Diablo Four and that plus the WoW expansion that's a full plate. But maybe no yeah. new WoW X pack. You got WoW Classic this year. You're gonna wait one year this time because new MMO. No, I think we definitely hear new expansion. It's time. I mean. Isn't we are. If you look at their past history, it is time. I, yeah, sorry. It's, what I mean, what I mean on. is like, what I mean is like, if they announced a mind blowing new MMO, I think, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not playing that much, but I feel like, yeah, take another year for your WoW X back. Work on this cool new thing. Depending on how we react. To oh, it, they won't do it though. Like the WoW I mean, they, BFA mi- is they long might. The it's it's where we're at. I mean, traditionally in the past, we've seen okay, we're going into the final raid tier, we're announcing the next expansion at the same time, and then you have a year of that raid tier before the expansion actually hits. That's kind of the schedule we're lined up for right now. Yeah, that's I mean, no guarantee that it'll go a year. They might be able to turn it around in, you know, five or six months, but... It's also their their biggest... It's also their biggest revenue generator. And these other games they may may or may not announce aren't going to be selling anything soon. They may have pre-orders, I suppose, but it's not going to be, it's not their meat and potatoes. Their meat and potatoes is wow money. 
and they need to get out in front of that. So I think 100% they will do the pattern John's talking about because they have. That's usually what they do. That's where we're at. You're right. That's exactly where we're at. And the next, by the way, the next expansion will probably be announced at like a Gamescom or something, because that's the loop. That happened last time. Exact same loop. Legion was at uh, Gamescom 2015. Uh, BFA announced 2017. At... Legion was announced at Gamescom, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That's what I just like. Said. Why would you? If you have like, because Diablo Four is a pretty big flagship title. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if you would announce everything now, especially if it was Diablo Four and a new high scale project, whatever it might be. Right. Like, isn't there? Is there such a thing as them announcing too much and saying like the WoW X Pack can wait till mid year? In a world where Blizzard is beloved and just a darling that can do no wrong, yes. Blizzard as it currently stands right now, I think their best move is to go, look at all the amazing stuff we have. Please love us. I agree. I think it has to be as they need to throw a lot at the wall. And it all needs to be good. And I think it probably will probably will be. Whether it's enough to, you know, assuage people's concerns or not, I don't know. But I mean I don't know. I Hello China. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. So all I'm saying is if they if they get up there and it's if it's Diablo, whatever this Overwatch thing is, and a WoW exp uh, expansion, that is a great BlizzCon. That's a lot of we, content. So We know that a lot of people have been pulled off, like the rumored StarCraft project, the Heroes has been pared down. Like We know divert resources have been diverted for a while now. Yeah. And it seemed like it was just Diablo. And now if there's another Overwatch, it just seems like that's... That's got to be all their resources. They have a big team on WoW, big teams working on Diablo Overwatch, plus whoever's maintaining the other games. You know what else is I'm, weird? I don't know who, where else they get people to work on it in an MMO or something large scale, plus the Warcraft 3 remaster. Right, right. And a lot, I mean, of the, the, like a, lot. The, a lot of the people that are working on the incubator stuff, meaning titles we haven't heard of yet, whether they be full-blown, you know, like the, the, the Battlefield-like StarCraft thing they canceled recently, uh, or small mm -hmm. mobile stuff. We don't really know how many people are working on them other than the main designers that went in there, but it's not enough for a full team. So that's just like prototype stage. So I don't I don't know, man. Like all of that is such a mystery to me. They haven't said really anything since Adham came back and said they were working on it, but they and, and you saw a few people disappear into it. But that's it. Like other than well, the Starcraft. There's also there's also rumors we're getting Diablo two remastered. No. Which would actually somewhat line up if we are really at the cusp of Warcraft Three Remastered releasing. There's a good chance they're ramping up production on that. Could so be. It could be the same team just rolling right into that. Could be, but it definitely cannot be their their Diablo announcement for the show. It just can't be that. It has to be for. I, or, I, I don't know if they can announce a remaster before they see how well this remaster does. I well, guess they just can project that it'll do super well, but I'm like, I don't know. We've talked about remasters before and how you play them for a little bit and then you're done. Blizzard's an exception to the rule in a lot of cases with their games. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to buy it, but I'm worried I'm going to play it like three days or maybe not play it at all and just buy it, you know, out of impulse or, or hype. I, I, I just. Yeah, but it's not a sub game. That's all they need you to do. If That's they're true. targeting I guess so. selling I, copies, they don't care if you play for months. Just buy it once. Mm -hmm. I just kind of assumed they'd wait to see how well it did before they do another one, but maybe not. I get I the know. feeling that Blizzard wants to get everything on Battle.net in some fashion. Yeah. To where it is an installable Diablo. I mean, maybe we get there eventually. Who knows? Maybe it's the one game that doesn't show up there, but Diablo 1, 2, 3 so on we've already got starcraft remaster we're about to have warcraft 3 remaster i i get the impression that they are slowly kind of just moving the catalog in that direction whether or not they end up doing that with the really old stuff that maybe doesn't age quite as well i don't know yeah but i wouldn't be surprised to i mean diablo 2 is big and beloved enough that it, it wouldn't surprise me if they feel safe just picking to do that one and I and I won't lie, like of the two, I'm not planning on getting reforged at this point because I just, I'm kind of RTS'd out. I don't feel like playing an RTS. And I love Warcraft Three, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I would absolutely feel a Diablo Two remaster though. I would play that, like tomorrow. 
Um, but what I would play sooner is Diablo 4 or whatever they call it. So this has to be the year they do that. They have to announce it. There just isn't any way they can't. If they don't, it's a huge error. We know they're working on it. We know they almost announced it last year from all that internal leak stuff. They have it. This is happening. But, and just to play devil's advocate, because we do that sometimes here, we also heard the rumor that the reason they didn't show it was because there was essentially nothing there last year. Yeah. Which means we have a year of development on that game. Yeah. Those games don't get made in a year. No. I mean, and they... they can show a trailer, but I... I that's a ways away if there was really nothing to go off plus of. they're pretty hardcore have been pretty hardcore in the past uh since diablo 2 actually was or 3 rather was kind of the reason for this they don't like announcing this stuff seven years in advance anymore they won't do it they want to do like overwatch and hearthstone and newer stuff where they say we've got a new game and this whole next year is testing and it will release the next spring like a year ahead of release is kind of their thing now so you're right but I'm not sure they weren't far enough along to show something last year. I mean, the word internally was um, it just wasn't quite far enough. But I think, I don't know, in a year, you can probably whip it. You probably get it to a place where you can demo that thing. I don't, I don't know. They got classic together in a decent amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, they did. That was pretty quick. Felt like a year, right? Something like that. Yeah. Maybe a little yeah. more. But yeah, it, it, this is. there's no way we're going to get an announcement for Diablo and not get it for six years. So to your point, John, it's a good one. I think that you're not wrong, but they can't do that, man. They have to announce it, and it has to be out by 2021. It has to happen. Mm, I can I can see a world where it comes out in 2022. Mm. Like, I, I very easily. Diablo is a, I mean, maybe not in this whole Activision's really putting a lot of pressure on us world, but if it has the Blizzard polish and attention... I can potentially see it happening. You know, usually games a year in are still fairly rough, which means I would expect maybe a teaser trailer to get people hyped and going, yeah, Diablo 4, maybe some proof of concept type stuff. But I would be pretty surprised if we if we saw too, too much. And I think 2020 goes by and maybe we're getting close to release and... I think 2021, if it all comes together really, really well. And if it doesn't, I think 2022. Yeah, I could see 2022, I suppose. I don't want to see that. 2022 but... for Diablo 4? Yeah, why not? That's three, two, three years from now? Two years. Yeah. Mm. That's that's pretty short for Blizzard standards. I, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, like, standard for a game. That, yeah. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with you or think get your estimates wrong. I just it's uh, I, hearing that just makes me a frown in my brain. <laughs> it just makes I just, you sad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want it now. I want I want a reason to continue playing Diablo, basically, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it just another three years. Is, I'm like I might be dead. Who knows? <laughs> Feeling that mortality a little bit here as well. It's like, come on, well, guys. Well, you know, I'm pretty patient with they're pushing like 15 games like got pushed in the last like two weeks. So, yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah, I want them to take their time to make the games polish, but at the same time, I'm like, I just bought two games that I didn't even play. Like, <laughs> it's like I, my backlog is like the size of Russia. I have to, I have to call out Thrush Unreal. 83 in the chat just real quick he says just play wow it's like diablo but better <laughs> um it's I nothing like diablo at all it's, i don't know about oh, nothing okay like it's diablo. got levels and loot but how those levels and loot are achieved are 100 percent different it's a totally different game it's an isometric uh that's not a good comparison that's like saying um play uh play okay i know what it's like it's like saying just play quake it's like overwatch but better i mean it, yeah they're shooters but we've come a long yeah. way it's not the same you can't, they're really they're really different the feel of the games are really different for sure yeah there's a reason why i would no. be excited for diablo despite being a current wow player like no. there there is a difference there but you know I will say part of what got me into WoW was I was like, oh, this is like playing a 3D Diablo. 
Yeah. Well, uh, Ethereal Vision says he's seen people predicting four or five new games and a ton of future game announcements from BlizzCon. Well, then that, yeah, that is overhype. I don't know who's doing that. If anyone tells you there's going to be five new games announced, they're smoking crack. That's not going to happen. It's probably Riot's fault. Maybe. I, mean, I feel like we're pushing it with three. So we'll this is see Blizzard. What happens. This, is, yeah. this, is, this is like one game at a time, Blizzard. Now, I know they're a new company now and have a lot of products on the go. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I remain skeptical. There, uh, it would be definitely, I think, would just, if there were like four new games announced this year, yeah, that would be a sea change for the company. Oh, yeah. The company's never had like four games in development like that. You, like maybe they have and they can them, but like, you know, like an Ubisoft press conference, Bethesda, you know, you're getting like 18 announcements at their things, not Blizzard style normally. It's like there's one big ticket item and a few more ancillary products usually, which is why I'm skeptical that knowing that Overwatch and Diablo are getting announced that I don't even know if I'd announce a WoW expansion at this BlizzCon. Oh, they have to, though. BFA so long in the tooth in people's minds, they have to do something, I think. Because that thing's their moneymaker. That's where they're, all their revenue is. I right mean, now. the one tantalizing thing about all this is the four mystery panels. That seems excessive. Yeah, it's it's a For lot. For them. It's a lot. <laughs> and, and so it does make one wonder. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you the other thing that's weird about the mystery panels, and I do think some are devoted to a WoW expansion realistically, but if you look at the schedule there are places where it has wow expansions listed not as mystery coming soon but as like hey here's where we're doing a world of warcraft update panel here's where yeah. we're doing a world of warcraft q a panel you know that sort of stuff now yeah they can be cheeky and they can keep it real vague and just say yeah you know world of warcraft's a game but, it's fine okay so hang on Let, let's meet halfway you know warlords of draenor and legion had like the mini teasers yeah, yeah. maybe that's all that is this year is well, a mini teaser. yeah it could be i'm I'll, I'm going to lay my predictions down right now. Here's my BlizzCon predictions. We can see if they come true. Lay it down. I think, I think whatever the WoW expansion is, is the closest thing to coming out, so we get the most of it. Lay I think it. that's followed by Overwatch 2. I think lay we're going to get more information about that than anything else because I think it's the second closest thing to coming out. Then I think we're going to get Diablo 2 Remastered shown. Lay and it. then I think we're going to get a light <laughs> teaser. For Diablo 4. It laid. is the furthest away. <laughs> laid, 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 laid. Done. Oh, yes. All right. It's hammered. I down. will also tell you, I think the band is going to be 21 Pilots. Okay. With a possible <laughs> runner up. I don't know. And with a possible runner up of Tenacious D. Those are my predictions there. Coming back. Again. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the uh, other and... thing is they are so late with this band announcement. It is weird how late they are. They've never been oh. this late. Not once. And a Hearthstone expansion because they always. Oh, yeah. Yeah, remember, they got to make time for all that, you know, other stuff that's ongoing. Yeah, they no, will. no new Overwatch hero, though. No. I, I think I read that somewhere. That was, that's like a confirmed thing. That's because it's a new Overwatch game and they don't need to and do a hero. I guess there's no heroes announcement at this opening ceremony either. Well, right. There, Deathwing. There should yeah, there sure could have been, <laughs> but they did it early. So you're right. There's no. Uh, I mean, I the mean, Heroes fan in me wants this to be a teaser for something big, Heroes announcement-wise, at the show. But the person who's been disappointed before <laughs> by the company's treatment of that game is like, there is nothing. Mm -hmm. It is a desolate wasteland now. You got your present. I think, Makes okay, so I'm actually going to, I I think, John, you laid out a lot of really key things. And also, in this case, because Diablo 4 is the big looming, like, you better announce it kind of thing. It actually is also best situated as the last thing that they show. It's a great end of keynote moment um, to blow that out. I think you're absolutely right because we get wow in a year, right? The expansion is a year away. It always is. So they announce it now. Next year we're playing it. Uh, or, you know, right around now or a little bit later sometimes. Um, and what was the middle one? Oh, and the Overwatch one seems like a perfect middle one i totally agree with that i think you're right that is a logistical uh fair point you make kind of across the board so we'll see what band do you think it's gonna be 
Uh, I think his 21 Pilots thing is probably a decent pr- prediction. <laughs> what is 21 Pilots? It's a All band. my friends are heathens, <laughs> take it slow. Okay, they yeah. got that song. They got their... Um, blurry uh, face. That's bl- them, right? I am blurry face, and I care how you stink or however it goes. Yep. And then there's uh, the other ones that they do. <laughs> they just put out a new album. Honestly, like the I only like reason them. those are my predictions is because Spotify sent me a notice and they were like, hey, here's some bands playing in Anaheim around the time of BlizzCon. And I was like, okay, well, it's probably one of them. So that's where that prediction 21 came from. Pilots is, I think, a decent prediction. I've never heard of these 21 you Pilots. You have heard. Life. You've totally heard their music. I'm looking at pictures of them. It looks He's like only t- heard of 15 of them. <laughs> no, they're oh, of the pilots, of the total pilots. Yeah. I see. Yeah. They ever do a rap artist? Or is uh, it always metal? They haven't. They did. What was that like nerdcore rapper guy they had oh, one year that was way back? Um, yeah, that was uh, the guy that sings the Boba Fett song, right? Yeah, uh, I can't remember his name. MC mm-hmm. talks a lot, something like that. <laughs> that was it MC Chris. MC Chris. Is it Me- not not Mega Ran, is it? No. Smash mouth. <laughs> That's a bad prediction. Smash, smash well, mouth. I gotta, I gotta, because I have no idea what the band's gonna be. I'm just gonna predict it's like Blue Man Group. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I wouldn't complain I never about a Blue Man Group performance. Those guys are awesome. Oh. Sorry, my back hurts. I guess they make those to appeal to young people to rock, right? Like it wouldn't be <sighs> something kind of awesome. Like I don't know. They um, peaked at Metallica, in my opinion. That's where it you got. know, like. Yo Yo Ma performance or something like that, right? No. So I think didn't that one year they had the three concerts. They had some that was last some different year. sort of. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, last year. Was yeah. Three, I mean, I don't know. I go to BlizzCon and I'm like, I've never <laughs> seen a second of concert. <laughs> like, I'm they've just, been this concerts kind of like also the what's the point part of the program. <laughs> yeah, they've been all over the place. The first year I went, it was video games live, which I loved. They've done kind of old school rock. They've done Ozzy Osbourne. They've done Metallica. They did Linkin Park, you know, all the way to I saw Weird the Al, Lindsey one. Sterling, stuff like that. So they've been all over. The yeah, last the, last year, good. last year, yeah, that was where they peaked, in my opinion, was Metallica. Last year they had Lindsey Sterling, uh, Train, and um, our buddy um, Christian Nair uh, played. Hodor. Yeah, Hodor played. That was their three splitter last year, and I don't know if they're going to do that again. The schedule does show closing entertainment in two places. Or no, is it? I don't have it here. Hold on. Do you guys have the the schedule up? Yeah, I think I, that's what I saw. Closing entertainment as well. But does it have? There are there two slots, or is that just me thinking I saw that? It's two slots because it's probably showing on multiple channels. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it says. Yeah, commu- well, community night simulcast is their thing. Where Closing they're... entertainment on the first night is showing on three different stages. Okay, the then they're... Epic, the Legendary, and the Mythic. So they're probably doing three groups again, or they're trying to. It's not going to work out if they don't hurry up. <laughs> it's going to be bad. It's going to be some jug band. I don't even know what a jug band is. By the way, John, I totally <laughs> skipped over this earlier. We were talking about Fallout, and you said... Um, I don't think... That game's gonna set the world, or they thought the, they thought Fallout seventy six was gonna set the world on fire. Do you remember saying that out loud? No, <sighs> I rarely remember. No, I, rem- I remember he said so he, it didn't. It was why are you charging this amount of money? You didn't exactly set the world on That's fire. That's what he launch. said. That was it. So then I just didn't know if you were making this reference, but in Fallout three, uh, this plays. <clears throat> Hold on a second. I don't know if you remember this. Kid. I freaking love the I spots. don't want to set the world on fire. My favorite part about this music is they, they sing the same refrain over and over again, and then about three times into it, this guy comes in and just talks, but he adds a little flavor to the same thing you've been hearing this whole time. He just goes, well, honey, I don't want to set that world on fire. <laughs> Yep. I just want to start a great big old flame in your heart. It's yep. just the same lyrics. He's just he's just going to talk it, yep. and he's going to add a little flourish to it, yep. and I think that's really nice. It is. You, again, another reason you'd love New Vegas, the radio stuff is primo on there. It's so good. And the guy that played... Uh, Chandler. No. Is in it. 
He's yes, not he Chandler. Is. Oh, is he? I don't know. Not, he is in it. I don't know if that's who you're talking about. No, I'm thinking of it. Colonel Matthew Perry. Colonel yeah. Colonel Ty on Battlestar Galactica. Oh, nice. Oh, Salt Eye. Yeah, he's he just, he's in New Vegas and he plays drunkenly the DJ. angry all the time. Well, at first he's, he's like a Canadian actor. He's a doctor that helps you at first get all your stats figured out. And then later, when you turn on the radio... Oh, yeah, I did hear him. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Michael guy. Hogan, that's his name. Yeah, he's very, very good. Very, very good. Oh, that game is so good. All right, anyways, is, where are we now? We've passed that part. Are we done talking about Deathwing, or do we want to... Well, oh, let's we talk were, about we Deathwing. Predictions. Well, let's yeah. do, let's oh, do yeah. Deathwing, because Any... Blizzard... What else do we have to say? Those are the games we think are coming... Like, Bo, did you have predictions? We should give Bo a chance no, no, to no, do no, his no, no, laid no. down predictions. Laid. No, no, no. I, I, it's it's whatever's been announced. That's what we're getting. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not announced, but leaked. <laughs> All right. Let me, you know, let me... and, and if there's something else there, I'll be pleasantly surprised. But I, I'm a, I'm a kind of a cynic. I'm kind of in a bad mood with, with Blizzard stuff. So yeah. you know, uh, not not negative towards them. Just like I learned to keep my expectations in check from Heroes PTSD. So yeah, there I get that. I feel the same. And I'm very happy about it, hearing Diablo Four. So let's right. fingers crossed. It looks it's amazing. Let me say this to you though. Um, what was it going to be? It was going to be a point that was a real big point. Oh oh oh. Uh, we should announce this because we haven't said anything to anybody. But you two are going to be around on Friday morning, the morning they announce everything. So am I. So we're going to do a BlizzCon, because we're gone from BlizzCon, BlizzCon this year. We're going to do a BlizzCon simulcast of that opening ceremony. Now, the reason I think this yeah. is going to work out, although I'm still waiting for an answer from Blizzard to make sure I'm not crossing any lines I'm not supposed to, because that thing is streaming to both virtual ticket owners and just everybody, because the opening ceremonies are for everyone, I think we can just have that up on screen the way I do E3 every year with John, and the three of us can do live commentary of the announcements um so that's our plan which is i think what 9 a.m my time 8 a.m john's although it's 2 2 p.m my time so i'm actually am trucking into work for the morning but i'll be off and home by the time it starts. right so. oh and john we might be same time zone again because isn't that the day time rolls back for everybody but you oh it could be it always happens during blizzcon so yeah we it's might on sundays on though weekend. isn't it doesn't it usually happen on the weekend oh yeah i think it is oh. i think those are right oh, okay yeah i think it's usually that weekend and then it's like it's the day i normally went to disneyland and i'm like what, what happened yeah none of that it all is such a blur for me that i don't remember jack but anyway so that's gonna happen and we're gonna have a blast um I haven't done this since 2012 when they skipped a year uh, at BlizzCon, and so we did a BlizzCon thing, and it was fun, and I want to do it again. So we're going to do that, and the three of us are going to host it. So if you guys aren't going, and you and you would really like to hear our dumb commentary on top of the announcements, then I can't think of a better place to be than FrogPants.tv that day, or Twitch.tv slash FrogPants, either one. Okay. I had to stifle a burp. Let's do this now. <laughs> I do want to touch on this Deathwing thing. So Deathwing's coming to Heroes of the Storm. It's uh, an announcement you would normally kind of save for a big reveal at a thing like the con, but I have a feeling they're not going to do much from the main stage. Uh, so let's just talk about what that is in general. This actually made a lot of press this week. A lot of gaming press picked this up, which is interesting given the game's diminished uh, stature in terms of, you know, notability. But um, Deathwing, full dragon form, rock and roll. Has anybody? I mean, is he on the PTR? Or where Where is he? He's nowhere. We just know about him. As far as I know, there was the teaser trailer, the video showing it, and then, or I guess there's an announcement trailer, and then there was a a mini panel uh, with Kyle Dates, a game designer, and um, oh god, I don't remember who else was on there. Kyle Dates, hey. uh, Trixler was there. Trixler well, Trixler there? and Jay Howe were there to do like they there was a right. pre-recorded was game and they were commenting on it. Oh, okay. But there was an interview beforehand with Kyle, and uh, I'm just drawing a blank. And I'm just, it's it's late here, guys. When Kyle Dates watch. gets married, he should be Kyle married. He should change his name. Well, he'll be he'll you know <laughs> as things stand, he'll marry Bethany. And <laughs> oh, that'll be the that's that's right. That's that's well should we be talking about them <laughs> probably not <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably not that's uh <laughs> if you have Beth, to ask is probably not he's bow so to speak that's and, right um, I knew yeah that. they've been together for a long time and they're both great 
Yeah, we love Bethany. Yeah. Still the best yeah. uh, community person I ever worked with in all my time doing this stuff. Yep. She was amazing. Um, she's not dead. Well, she's I hear still there. Riot's hiring, so she should go work for them. Yeah, Riot is hiring. Oh, China has lots of money. I have too many people that I like for a company that produces no games that I enjoy. And tell the, I bet, I don't something's going to be in these new ones for you. I don't know which one it is. I feel like John and I are, because I'm the same. I'm not really into it either, but there's something in one of these ones. That they, shooter isn't even going to come out. The fighting <laughs> game is not going to win me over. Yeah. I don't need another card game in my life. Yeah. I'm not going to play League of Legends. What about just, the weird flash they showed of like what looked like could be an action RPG or an MMO or something? Uh, no. No? Okay. If they just did a flash of it, then no. Like, I already don't think the shooter is going to actually happen. So if you just showed a flash and we're like, I don't know, we're thinking about this, then no. The answer is no. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I mean, I can't. So what? You, so for you, that wasn't a bunch of announcements. That was just like a peek into their incubator. <laughs> right. That was like a look into the writers' room of them going. Hmm. Okay. At first, I thought because everybody was like they announced so many things, and then I went and watched what actually got talked about and shown, and I went, they didn't really announce much. They were just like, I don't know, man. What if we did like a shooter? Yeah. Okay. Cool. How about this? Kind of like this. How about yeah? The, you the... know, I got that sense from it too. It was like <laughs> we're gonna go dark for a while. They, like they weren't announcements. Like we are definitely making this. We're beyond a point of no return. It definitely had that feel. Like, hey, what if we made this game? Like, you're. I think your feelings are. You're not alone in that feeling. I, I think know. so. I mean, some people are just blinded by their fandom there, but I I agree with you. Yeah. Um, how about how about the the animated thing though? That's interesting, right? You'll watch that. Check it out. No. Oh come on! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might not either. Like, what if it has like an anime? What if it has like a full anime intro? Then you guys will both be. Why do it. I? Then I'll watch the intro on YouTube. <sighs> I don't. Why do I want to watch that? It's about a game I don't play. Yeah, that's true. If I hear that it's as good as Castlevania on Netflix, I'll check it out. <laughs> that show is cool. That show is cool. I want to keep. I, isn't there? They're still doing seasons for that, right? Like new stuff. Yeah, they did two. And there's going to be a third. Yeah. I think I haven't seen that two. Ghost in the Shell thing, though, not looking good. Oh, yeah. That looks like a like a 3DS game or something. That's a weird uh, I, looking I style. I scrolled down in the comments just to see if I wasn't crazy or not. And all the comments <laughs> were just like, yeesh. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's basically another Sonic the Hedgehog uh, situation we got going on. Yeah, nobody's happy about that. Uh, I don't know if you guys care, but Last of Us 2 got delayed till spring. How we feel about that? Dead. Was that all we were going to talk about? Deathwing. Oh, we Deathwing. He's a it. big dragon. He blows fire. He destroys the world. What else do you need? Well, I mean, I don't even know what his I abilities mean, are. He, what does he do? He looks cool. Uh, well, he so he doesn't mount. Okay. He's permanently unstoppable. So you can't slow him, but you also can't speed him up. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that it was it wasn't really clear because they didn't present it in the usual way that they do it, um, but is that he doesn't start in the home base. He starts flying above the map. And oh, when you weird. land him, you pick one of his two modes, which gives him different abilities. Okay. Yeah. And then I don't, I think when he dies, he takes off back in the air or you can send him back in the air, but, but you never hearth back. You're either in the air dead or on the map. And when you go to land on the map, you can pick between one of two fighting styles. Each time and he comes back. Yeah, each time he comes down. So you're not locked into an alt and you're not locked into three, you know, it changes kind of like Valera gets a new set when she goes stealth. But that's crazy. He can keep switching back and he's unstoppable. You can't heal him, but he has a ridiculous health pool. Uh, but oh, when he flies in the air, he heals himself. So in order to heal himself, he flies in the air and he puts his plates back on. There's other mechanics that I, I haven't really dug into yet. Um, and he seems to do an insane amount of damage, has huge AoE, has a big body uh cataclysm he flies in the air and just puts a big wave of lava on the ground i mean the thing is he's deathwing ass deathwing mm. he's not like some reskinned hero that is just doing stuff but in that reskin form he 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 is like a chogal level gimmick hero and he looks i mean he looks pretty cool there's no doubt about it he yeah, cannot no. be healed he can't be healed though he can't he be can't healed. be buffed he can't be hatted he can't be cloned. Oh, yeah, no clones. interesting. That's the way to balance it, I guess, because if he's super powerful otherwise, just don't give him any buffs or any kind of augments at all. That's interesting. 
Mm. Yeah, it's it sounds super cool. I have one extremely lore nerd gripe, and that is that, I, and I get you have a dragon with giant wings, so of course you want him to fly, but Deathwing lives under the earth. He lives in the realm of Deep Home. He's notorious for bursting out of the ground and cracking Azeroth in half. I feel like he should go underground instead of up in the air for uh, his mount. Uh. That's my one little lore nitpick. When he his body was destroyed and they bolted the armor plates on him, that was in Deep Home under the ground. So if you want to put a, like, he heals and gets his armor back mechanic, it makes more sense for him to be there. I know that's an extremely nerdy if, thing, if but he it's can... true, and that's what I want. If yeah. he could go back into the ground, I would love to play him on Haunted Mines. Oh Although I know gosh, that's not dude. the game, but just <laughs> dig into the ground there. and he, he, he grab people by their head and eat them, and then. Yeah. Well, here's the here's the thing. Uh, I assume this is just a death timer in the sky, right? Like he's no, it's yeah, it's yeah. his mount. He it's not a it's not a death timer. It's he when he mounts, he just flies up into the air. Yeah, but when he's dead. He's he flies dead up into just the like air. Like anybody else. Oh, no, he's just dead. Oh, he's I dead thought like he, I thought Bo said he flew up into the sky while I, after you well, killed him. You hit, you hit Z and then he goes up in the air and then he I goes guess, down wherever. Yeah, you want. you're basically back in the sky. Yeah, but okay. if you're dead, you're you're a corpse. He does make a corpse. Oh, good. A big floppy uh, physics physics course corpse getting blown all over the place like a big old fat dragon. I love that. Yeah. All yeah. right. Turn physics on, everybody. That's how you want to see it. Uh, this has good ragdolls. Yeah. He's super cool, though. Like, overall, like, my dumb lore criticism uh, aside, he's crazy. I can't believe they did this. Every time we talked about Deathwing, the old show, for as long as we've talked about him, I always said, I don't think it can be done. It's going to be disappointing. You're either going to see a dude walking around and he's sometimes a dragon or a stupid mechanic that's going to be lame. And they made something that's really cool and they found a way to make him i mean sure by actual deathwing standards he's tiny but he's big enough to where you're still just like oh god it's deathwing so i'm all for it yeah seems cool uh, i've only seen video so i need to well i mean obviously that's all we've seen but uh looking forward to that wonderful we'll see him before blizzcon or if it'll be yeah they there's they the said, heroes panel in the in the schedule yeah they said he would be playable on the show floor. He would be released in the first patch following BlizzCon. That makes sense. Okay. Boy, the fact that they announced him first, though, and there were no leaks. This was all Blizzard. Does bum me out because I think that means it's off the stage. You're not. This isn't going to be in. An, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm looking there. at the schedule. There's one purple meeting and for the Heroes of the Storm. There's one <laughs> panel. The purple meeting. And like it sounds like a game. Well, of you know they're, they're colored, right? So Hearthstone is I don't know whatever color it book, is. Book two it, had the red wedding. Book three had the purple meeting. Um, <laughs> the purple meeting. There's yeah. one. You, if you're a fan of heroes and you're going to the con for heroes, you you get 45 minutes. That's it. Yep. That's I it. don't like to that. That feels like the worst nail in the coffin to me. I don't like that. I mean, at least they're doing something, yeah. right? That's at least something. It's not like they have. I mean, you know, uh, the writer's room, well, no, they, they have the same amount of time. I'm trying to look for something. Codecraft, exploring Blizzard engineering is a longer, has more stage time. Than, uh, than, really? Than Heroes of the Storm. Ugh. Carbot Live has it. I mean, I'm just, I'm sort of making jokes, but yeah. I thought Carbot uh, retired. Is he there doing a thing? Is that happening? Carbot Live thing happened on day two. Oh, he said he quit the mm -hmm. channel and everything. I wonder if that's still happening. Probably. Did he? Yeah. I thought he was just ending the StarCraft thing. I thought he was ending. I thought he was just ending. I'm, I'm, I must have heard that wrong. And I was very <laughs> sad to hear it. I thought, what? What? And then maybe that was all wrong. Maybe he was just quitting StarCraft or the StarCraft series. I mean, I imagine he's got to be pissed. He did all those awesome animations for Heroes of the Storm, and it's just not a game now. I don't know. Yeah. It sucks. I don't know. I hate everything about it. Except the game. I love that game. Uh, all right. Now we can talk about Last of Us. <laughs> not that I care that much. I wasn't really into the first one. I'm not I'm not the giant fan freak out that a lot of people are for Last of Us. But Last of Us 2 is now delayed till spring. So for those of you who were excited about an end of year playing of that game, you will not get it. You will play it in the spring. May it's now something. in a weird spot. 
Yeah, it's Space right before new consoles, game. and you know, yeah. like wait, wait, when is it delayed till May something? May. Wow, so every all the big titles from like now are getting delayed. Like there's Doom Eternal. There's what's yeah. the other one that got delayed? Doom What's Eternal's in February. Um, oh, Cyberpunk's in in that early 2020. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there's gonna be Last of Us. Like that, it's gonna be so saturated with AAA games. Like it's it's ridiculous. But not only that, it's all on the tail end of this console cycle. We're about to have PS5 and whatever Xbox's new uh, console is gonna be called. Mm-hmm. And they, this feels just like Last of Us One did to me. It was so tail end of the PS3 cycle that I had a hard time getting excited about buying a $60 game for my PS3 when I knew PS4 was right around the corner. And sure enough, they did a remaster immediately, and I got that version instead. So I wonder if it'll be the same deal here. Like, we're just going to have this weird crossover. It's like... The- I mean, if you've got other games to play, then just wait. Yeah, that's what yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't wait. I mean, I am I am the person who is a huge oh. fan of Last of Us. That is a That game is heavily on my radar but i mean i stand by the same thing i said with doom if it needs to be delayed to be as good as it can be then delay it i would rather play a perfect version of that game later than a okay version of it sooner so yeah yeah um yeah, i never played the first one so i'm luckily immune to this feeling for that one it's really good i don't know why you know what i didn't like i liked the, the story is unparalleled the character interactions are insane it's one of the best presented ones of those I've ever played. I hated the actual gameplay, though. Shooting those freaking mushroom head guys was boring, and I did not like it. I don't know why. But, but, but it just didn't do it for me. It's the, it's, but it's the story. Is, it's the zombie apocalypse sort of deal, kind of, right? Except sort the of. terrorists are the humans. Yeah. The, you know, that whole theme? Yeah. 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 I, I, I think it's a good theme, and if people like it, it's great. I think that was the big turnoff for me. I'm just like, I'm over that sort of narrative right now, or just had it too much. Yeah, and I was a little but. burned out in uh, Walking Dead at the time. That may have contributed to my feelings yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have no doubt it's a great game. I'm just not a criticism. Just why it didn't appeal to me. Sure, it just seems a little late in the game. And the and the other thing, John, I noticed is there. There's never been a release date for that. Um, how oh, what's it called? The Japanese guy wandering the place, fighting dudes. I, Sekiro. Are you talking about uh, Death Stranding? No. No, that's still on Sekiro. schedule. Sekiro, Sekiro, the final chapter. No. Oh right. Oh, okay. Yeah. That thing. Whatever right. it's called. Uh. That's I mean, even Sekiro a... is the Sekiro. That's it. No, that's the that's the game that came out that was like Dark Souls. Oh, the one am I thinking of? Uh... Oh, you know what you're talking about. It had that kind of sweet trailer. At... Yeah, yeah, it had the really really amazing looking trailer. Crazy yeah, looking. Haven't heard anything about that? I know what you're blossoms. talking about, but yeah. it Whatever's was very called. like um, cinematic. You know? Yeah, it was that like cherry blossoms floating everywhere? Not Yakuza. Mm. <laughs> that's definitely not it. So I don't remember. The... Oh, Ghosts of Shishimi. Or Shishima or Chimmy. <laughs> you know why that's funny? Because it's the most sushi. unintentionally funny thing I've ever. Because Shishimi is like a sushi, right? Like a yeah, like a it's fish not a sushi. <laughs> ghost, ghost, <laughs> ghost fish confirmed. Uh, Tashima. Is it on my plate? I don't know. S- s- well, whatever it is, but that game, uh, there's been no release date for it, and it's looking like Sucker Punch uh, will. If I were them, I would just wait till the new consoles and do it there, and just up the up yeah. everything to be better. Because at this point, I mean, we're not going to get it. We're not going to see it. Um, what else? The oh, they showed a teaser for Command and Conquer Remastered. That uh, that teaser's out. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. I wasn't really a Command and Conquer guy. I was a Warcraft guy, so it doesn't really boil my cheese at all. No, happy uh, for anyone who wants it, but yeah, that's for me. Uh, Shroud joined Mixer today. <laughs> Not that it matters, but I, we talked about this in this class I was teaching tonight. We were talking about um, people going yeah. over there, and somebody in the back yells, I go, yeah, so first it was uh, you got your ninja going over there with a Fortnite and whatever, and then you got Shroud doing it, and some guy in the back goes, traitor, like that. Like It was just like this weird brand loyalty thing to Twitch, and I, I think that's a weird Twitch thing. Twitch is a culture, though. I, Twitch, Twitch is like... I think especially for younger folk, when you're like you're part of a social group, yeah. it can feel like the Twitch area is like our. I mean, my generation it was like you skateboarder, you jock, you nerd, yeah, you carpet kid, like carpet you know, kid. Wait, like, wait, wait, slow down, slow down, carpet kid. What is that? 
<laughs> kid made out. I don't. I, I don't want to get into trouble, but you know, we have a special students that have to go in the room with carpets because it's safer in there for them. You know that kind of really? thing. Really? I have never heard that in my life. Carpet kids. I yeah, know. we had that in our school. That. We had, and you know, they instead of learning math, they do easier math and make chocolate and stuff like that. You know, they. <laughs> <laughs> the various learning challenges it isn't actually funny but no i know I, what you mean we but them, it's we this... call them carpet kids because their classrooms are the only classrooms that had carpet in the whole school <laughs> what <laughs> what's cracking me well that's also weird but what's cracking me up is you went are you a nerd are you a jock are you this are you that are you a carpet kid and then you just moved on like it was the normal thing to say i've never heard it was that before. normal it was normal the most friend. normal thing in the world that carpet was the kid. high school experience there was the hippie people you know there's different cultural groups that have different cultural sure. touchstones there were like the the well the white rapper guy did you have <laughs> i don't know if i can allowed to say the up, w word did not. you have the whole did you have a whole group of white rapper guys like a whole, well, you know, the W word guys. W yeah. word? What's the W word? It's uh, like the N word, but for white people. Cracker? I'm just not sure. There I... isn't a W word for white people. White. There is. W I G G E R. Oh. No, oh. But I've never heard yeah. that except for just now. I've never I've never heard it either. But you know, they're, the they're, chat they're has very, and Mo has. They're very intensely. They're very white and very into rap and maybe have an identity crisis about, you know, their cultural background. And they're on Dr. <laughs> Phil a lot and Jerry Springer. I, and, <laughs> I was with you, Scott, when he said the W word for white people. I was like, Cracker doesn't start with the W. <laughs> <laughs> right and it didn't sound and i thought is it just I white just, i'm not sure if we're, i'm not sure if it's okay to say that word it's a little too close to the word i don't want to say so no i, I get uh, you plus it's derogatory in a tangential way it's like a i, yeah, I, I get I get, yeah. I get your point well, we had that group you know those guys and you know all that kind of, like you have cultural touchstones and twitch today for kids today it's like are you on twitch kappa monka s monka s kappa kappa pog champ and you know, like that's their that's this this is their values. I hate right? that like, Kappa stuff. I hate it. I hate yeah, it. but we're too old for it. But if you're like 15, you're like, a whole new world of emoji possibility is opening before my very mind. And yeah. these things are amazing, I suppose, to them. Well, people so say when you Kappa, go to Mixer, where yeah. it's like a different language, it can feel like you were part of the hippie group. But then you got too cool for the hippie group when you started jocks accepted you into their group and you ditched them. And I'm just saying there's an audience that probably thinks immature things like that, you know, and that's why we're you know, not doing it. All, all that to say um, is that, you know, I, I'm not sure if this is a great move for those two streamers. I know they're probably getting a ton of money and don't care, but. Well, here's the deal. Their contracts guarantee. like a ghost town. Their, care, their contracts guarantee they get a ton of money for the move. And for as long yeah. as it lasts, they'll, they will be compensated as if they had never left Twitch. I promise you that's in the contracts when the contracts run out if they do or when they do they'll just go back to twitch if it ain't cutting it it's well, not well twitch will twitch hold on to their sub numbers because the one thing i'm thinking i'm like you spent all that time it's not the money you make it's the distribution list you gain and twitch will make a distribution list for you so life after streaming might be like talk shows gaming and you still have that connection with fans mm -hmm. uh whatever it might be that seems like really because they deleted ninja's page yeah I wonder if Ninja was like, okay, I'm done at Mixer. I want to come back if, if Twitch still has all that old information. Uh, I, I don't would know. bet they, they play tough now, but they welcome him back with open arms because that's all revenue that they get to if he's yeah. successful back on their platform. It just seems pretty dumb. It's like, when's the first YouTube exclusive guy going to show up? You know, it's, well, it's just not what the, they have that now with uh, some YouTubers. Some, some of that YouTube stuff already happened, but I don't know if it, that was when YouTube gaming was trying to gain some ground and people still stream there they just call it youtube <laughs> so uh yeah. they have the second largest uh share like twitch has the largest then youtube for for live streaming that is and then uh what was third well i think this was us only because there's a lot of stuff internationally that we don't even know about but like uh right. caffeine.tv has a tiny little blip but yeah mixer's not doing great which kind of kind of bums me out because i know it's a good service it's fine i just think this stuff is so culturally tribal that it's real hard to get people to jump unless you pay them tons of money in the case of the streamers in the case of the viewers they just see that as turn coding and they're not going to go to your service 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta do something cool. Like the reason Twitch is where it's at, you know, it's a big corporate entity, blah blah blah. But people think it's cool. People think it's a cool place, even if it's full of criticism. They think it's cool. So if you want to compete with them, I think you just got to be cool too. Well, <laughs> like just, HBO yeah. shows are cool. It's the cool place to go get stuff. You know, like you're not gonna compete with them by uh, not uh, trying to match their level if that's the kind of content you want to create. You know, and and like because like I don't think Netflix is cutting it on the HBO level, and eh. and. In, I might argue with that. I think Netflix is right up there with them, content-wise. I mean, it's taken them a Netflix while. Netflix has a few wins, but they have a lot of crap. I, honestly, I, I, I'm like, when Netflix original programming came out, it was all on board, and then like stuff I really didn't like started coming, and I'm just I bailed on on that. Yeah, hype there, train. you're I'm, right. I'm, There's more mush in there than there needs. Yeah, yeah that's true. I, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, if you've... HBO tells you we're doing a new limited series, you. You may not always like it, but it will almost always be at least quality. Yeah, it'll like, be a you really You know you're well getting made. a quality thing, whether you like it or not. It's almost always at least at that level. That's mm-hmm. not the case with Netflix. Netflix is a, there's some stuff I love on there, but it is, you know, you don't know what you're getting. Did you guys watch that yeah. first Watchmen episode? Yeah, it's oh, good. No, I don't see it yet. It's very cool. I'm really behind on TV stuff these days. <laughs> it's I'm so excited about it. I can barely stand it. It's just it's a oh, they're scratching all my itches. And John was right on Twitter. As soon as um what's his name? Judd uh, Jimbo Tim Blake Bob Nelson. Tim Blake Nelson shows up with a freaking magnetic ass looking silver mask thing on his face. I just about poop myself. I was so excited. And that weird friggin' voice he's doing too. I just like it. Yeah, oh, I lo- that's the thing is I, I just I'm into it. And I, you know, I see chat room saying like it's okay. Hopefully it gets better. Sorta. I mean, I guess the thing is is just that I'm into the world. Like it has me hooked. I'm gonna take the journey. I'm not. I'm not one of these people that I'm like. Well, I'm gonna evaluate each episode on their own merits. Like. It was enough for me to say, "Oh, this will be a series I watch." Yeah, and they're doing some world building that that <clears throat> that I can't figure out yet, and I love that in TV shows. Even if ultimately I get disappointed in the end, um, and uh, here's a good example of this where they didn't disappoint me. It was the same showrunner. This is Damon Lindelof, who was famously on Lost, and a lot of people are mad at him because that show was great until it ended, and the ending was terrible, and they all blame him. But he goes and does The Leftovers on HBO, and that show was one of my favorite shows in a very long time. Mm-hmm. I loved all three seasons of The Leftovers, and it had one of the most satisfying endings a show could have. But it was full of these weird world-building things that you just needed to understand. Like, in the lost days, it was smoke monsters and polar bears. And that, and the, and the other thing, it was not just why are people disappearing, but why are the ones that are left here, why are they experiencing these things? And I loved what, his, what he did there. To me, I'm already feeling some of that again with this Watchmen take. With lots of weird ideas that have no answer in the first episode. They just show it nonchalantly like, oh, well, here's the thing. And you go, what are you doing? And now, I, hey, and now I'm all in. It's raining baby squids. What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm into I don't, it. I don't know. There that's you go. Raining baby squids. That's exactly a perfect example. I don't want to give too many other things away. But when the, the second that happened and they acted like it's just a normal day and it just happens sometimes and all traffic stops for it. I just, oh, the Fargo lover in me. I, I, there's th- these kinds of things are so up my my urethra that I cannot wait for more of it. All right. <laughs> and remember when Fargo just out of nowhere decided to put UFOs in its show? Yeah, for no reason. And then they went away <laughs> without explaining any of it. I love that in season two. I loved it. I don't have any complaint about anything they'd ever did in Fargo. I love that series so much. I can. I want to kiss it. I want to put my lips to it. It's so oh, good. Oh, man. That's so great. It's so great. All right. Um, uh, oh, and Blizzard, by the way, more Blizzard news. Former Xbox executive Mike Yabara, or is it just Barra and the Y is silent? I don't know how you actually say it. It's like Yarel. Yabara. <laughs> it's like Yarel. <laughs> uh, Yarel. Yarel. Yeah. Yabara. There you Yabara. go. He has joined Blizzard in the as Micro, an executive Micro. vice president or executive vice president in charge of something. Crap, I forgot. Uh, he was. I, I can't. Yeah, I don't remember either. It's in the it's in the article, but he was. He joined Xbox in two thousand. Yeah, he's supposed he's like to a be nineteen year veteran of Xbox. Yeah, 
and he's going to be vice president and GM, which I assume means general manager of Blizzard. So I think it's a pretty clutch position. Yeah, I don't um, want to. I don't want to read too much into it, but I th- I think maybe Jay Allen Brack will be happy to have some other muscle there, some some long term well, industry help. I mean, Xbox the- has made you know Xbox has made some bad moves, but some good moves over the years, and uh, I think probably this is. I don't know. This seems like a really sensible pickup. I don't know much about the guy, but I'm kind of stoked. Blizzard's in its own sort of silo. It'll be interesting to see if that has an influence coming from a big, you know, international publisher of consoles in that world. Yeah, I think that dude's a good pickup. He's also got to be extremely expensive. There's no way he went cheap. Well, and then, yeah. hey, Bo, Planet Side Three is confirmed for uh, coming. Are you exci- excited for that? You- I mean, yeah. Like I played a lot of two, and eventually, you know, moved on from it. I think it has its problems. I'm, you know, they at the time, I think they were still with Sony Online, and weren't Daybreak yet when they made Planet Side Two. So this will be like the first Planet Side they make free from Sony, and you know, whatever pressures there were. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I, I kind of want good things. I want a reason to play Planet Side. So now the one thing they said is that Planet Side Arena is like a stepping stone to this. So yeah. that's a little worrisome. Yeah. Arena is their battle royale game, and when I tried it in like, it was like there's a closed beta. It was really bad. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was Planet Side, but with the skin of battle royale. It wasn't inspiring. And then mm-hmm. with Fortnite just going nuts. Or Apex going nuts at the time. Mm-hmm. I think they just pulled it, but they're re-releasing it, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I still believe in the out. project. I do too. I'd love to see a return to glory on that thing. We'll see how it goes. Let's talk about some games we've been playing. I already mentioned New Vegas. That's an old game. Don't have to tell you too much about it, except it's you know also Obsidian. It's all in prep for Outer Worlds. I'm ready to put that aside while I play Outer Worlds. And uh, ESO been back in there. So a lot of a lot of RPGs for me this week. Uh, John, you bid you did play Outer Worlds today after the launch. Uh, do yeah. you have a do you have any early uh, takes? How are you feeling about it there? Yeah, very early take. Haven't played a ton of it, but that game is incredible. I cannot wait to play it. I cannot wait to play more of it. The game looks amazing. Uh, the humor in it is really hitting me right where it needs to. Um, there, there's just. The character customization, I made my There Will Be Dungeons character. I'm playing a Stanley Billings. Nice. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about Space Stanley running around out there. Uh, but it's it's really, really neat. And I mean, like I said, the, the thing about it is, is it, it instantly feels polished in a way that the games that it reminds you of. Mm-hmm don't yeah like it feels tighter it feels more focused by all accounts it's a shorter overall experience which means that you're going to i mean i heard the developers say this by making it a smaller experience it's not fallout it's not elder scrolls it is more self-contained areas it is smaller sections the gameplay you're looking at about 20 hours or so as opposed to 40 hours or so i keep hearing really? 35 to 40 with with all the con if you do all side quests is what i've heard but, right but that but, right. seems short for, I, I mean it does for a game like this but john what john is hearing and reading i've read the same and it sounds like it's to the game's uh strengths because it doesn't it's not about just wandering all over the place not really knowing what you're doing it doesn't mean you're being handheld it's just that it, you know what more like mass effect think about mass effect the way yeah it handled that sort of stuff and yeah. what it sounds like, like to me is empire it's like somebody yeah another good example from bioware but if you took you took these two kinds of games a bethesda open world you know giant rpg and then mass effect with its more controlled sort of not linear progression but you know what i mean like a a, a tighter experience and you combine those that that's kind of what this is yeah um, i like mass effect and so it, i mean it sounds good it also frees them up to where they can program the game to be a little more aware of what you're doing. It's not so massive that they can't go, well, we don't know what players are going to be doing. So like I've played about an hour, probably all said and done of the game, maybe not even that. And I've already had checks where it's like, well, you're good at tech. So you've got 
this response. You're good at medicine. I've had cases where it's like, okay, well, you have all these abilities that you can use for this dialogue interaction, and they have different things and different outcomes, and they can result in, in different things. It, it feels a little more RPG-ish than what you see typically in an Elder Scrolls or a Fallout because the systems are a little tighter. Yeah. Um, and again, the game's just really funny. There's a bit, it's right at the beginning with the, the AI computer talking to you, and the, the computer, like, it, it wants you to just say that you're a different person so that the computer can work with you. Yeah. Computer's like, I only respond to this person. And you're like, okay, well, that person's dead. And they're like, okay, I understand that. You went out there, you had a big personal experience, feels like life and death, and now you're back, right? And you can keep telling the computer, I'm not this person, and the computer just keeps going, right, but I can only work if you tell me you are. Wow. And you're like, but they're they're dead. And the computer's like, gotcha. I, I think we're on the same page here. You're going <laughs> to pretend to be somebody else because you want to change your life, right? Yeah. And finally, you're just like, yes, fine, I'm him. And they're like, great, we're going to do it. We're going to work well together. And it's just, yeah. it's this back and forth that immediately makes the ship and, uh, and what you're doing that much more endearing to you. And uh, that's basically where I, I stopped. I got to the ship which uh, is very very early it's kind of your first objective so i'm can't through wait. can't wait i'm basically through the intro cave if you played skyrim you know where you sneak past the bear that's basically as far as i've made it but um it's already had some really cool choices and some really cool dialogue options and how are you going to handle a situation moment and uh oh the I'm, bear there's a Sorry. bear over there it says here uh some Chewing of the, the chat room saying mainline it in 15 hours do everything you're playing about 30 uh that's fine with me i have so many long games that's fine i'm totally yeah, yeah maybe that's fine I, i'm just surprised based on what i was hearing you know about it that it's i think it the compared, what i've think been hearing fallout and then i'm like oh i think what they're so saying like is that that it feels that, that it feels like the best parts of fallout without without the bloat is what i've heard like yeah, what you what well, you love about that. yeah what you love about Fallout is all there what you love about those kinds of RPGs and systems, but it's just it isn't just I can pick up every can I can pick up every spoon I can you know like they that, that stuff's scaled back, and this game, you know for the fact that it's part of Game Pass on PC and Xbox is ridiculous I mean people they still have that dollar a month thing going for PC Game Pass like. <laughs> <laughs> well how are they even making money on this is what i want to know like how are they gonna how are they gonna make their money back on a game like this because it's so cheap to get into it um and it's the kind of game i would just like based on these reviews and all my friends impressions i'd just pay 60 bucks for it but i'm i'm gonna be playing it for nothing hardly because of the xbox game pass it's gonna be great boy i was just looking at twitch it's currently number six uh which is pretty good on the list uh, single player games don't get a lot of love on twitch these days so that's cool to see. But then uh, notice the Call of Duty Modern Warfare also came out tonight and currently has 248,000 viewers. So there's that. Yeah. Well, Call of Duty is going to Call of Duty. Yeah. It's going to be what it'll be. Most of those are Dr. Disrespect, who is neither a doctor, but is probably disrespecting something at the moment. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I also played Control. Oh, yeah. How's Control? It's good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really enjoying that game as well. It's got a really cool universe. Uh, I actually like the shooting, which is interesting because I, from people that I talked to, that was a aspect of the game that they said they didn't like. But mm -hmm. I'm I actually find the the combat in it to be pretty fun so far, and uh, so I'm enjoying it. It looks a little rough. It, it's weird because. It's the first game I played where it really leans into that ray tracing business. And so it means that there are things in that game that are unlike anything I've seen in any other game I've ever played. Like you will go up and they will show you a close up of a TV and you will see a perfect reflection live of the room you're in. It's colored correctly. It's reflecting the way it would in real life. It looks crazy cool. Same with glass and windows and things like that. And you're like, man, this game looks incredible. And then they do like a close-up of the character or a texture, just all of a sudden you hit a rough one and you go, oh, this game looks 
horrendous. Mm -hmm. So I keep having this weird back and forth of like, there's something about this game that looks awful. And then there's parts of this game that look unlike anything I've ever seen before. And it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I haven't exactly decided where I've landed on that, but the gameplay is fun. It's a really cool world dealing with, you know, government covering up strange happenings in the world and objects of power and things like that. Like I just got a floppy disk that gave me telekinetic powers because that's what it that's does. That's what you do, sure. Yeah, it's, that's how that works. So uh, it's a really neat universe. It's a really fun game. How, how well does it adhere to the, uh, to the song it's based on by Janet Jackson, Control? Does it seem like it sticks to that pretty uh, well? I mean, I think it... I think it's a one for one. Is it? Okay, that's great. Yeah. That's good to hear. Let's let's see if we can yeah. hear a little of that here. Yeah. Remember Control? This that was, was the a part. Song. Yeah, this yeah. was the part that it, I remember <laughs> from the game that I played. Uh, but it does have that same Max Payne feel when firefights break out. Do you remember? It? I'm assuming you played Max Payne. I did. Right? Loved it. Loved it. I, that that same way when you would get in a firefight and things would just be erupting in a cool way around you this game also has a lot of that there's a lot of they put a bunch of glass offices between you and the people that are shooting at you so there's a lot of bullets going through glass and hitting desks and monitors and you know debris flying everywhere and uh it's really satisfying i'm i'm having a very very good time with it if outer worlds didn't come out today i would be playing that tonight for sure all right both you and Bo picked up disco elysium and you played some and Bo hasn't yet uh tell me in uh in a, in a single review john why Bo should play disco elysium i mean i feel like i'm setting him up for disappointment by saying this but i also kind of feel like this is a game for Bo. yeah we said uh, that last week yeah like yeah. that's why i bought it like I, it was based on your recommendation last week actually it's just I bought a bunch of games and didn't play them. <laughs> so. There, There is a quirkiness to it, and there's a way that the world is set up that just jives with what I perceive things that Bo enjoys from storytelling. I mean, they're, not that Bo is completely random in some of the madness that he enjoys, but it has that element. You'll go to make a decision, and all of a sudden your tie will start talking to you. And you're not 100% sure if your tie is actually talking to you if in, or if in your drunken stupor you just believe your tie is talking to you and you've given it a personification, so which you drugs. can point out <laughs> if you would like. You could be like, you're just a tie. I, you can't talk to me. And it'll be like, oh, yeah, then why am I talking to you? And you're like, well, okay, that's a good point. I can't argue with your logic. And it's the problem I've had with the game so far and the, the thing that kept me from diving in is you are playing a piece of shit. Just to put it frankly, you wake up after three days of just being drunk in a hotel room, you're a police officer, you've been here to solve a murder, which you haven't done anything about, your clothes are scattered all over the place, one of your shoes has got been thrown through the window, you go out, people hate you because they're like, you're a cop, you're here to solve a problem, and you've just been drinking and being awful this entire time and yeah, it's, it's very relatable <laughs> and you're just like you're just like you have no memory of the past three days you don't even realize you were a cop and you're just like oh great i'm a cop cool and you just you are just a human scumbag mm. and you're given a partner very early on who actually has it together and it can you shoot your partner so far no so because you don't have a gun you don't have any of the stuff that you're supposed to have as a cop you get in trouble for not having um, your badge okay, anymore because yeah. it's okay. gone still, still um, relatable mm -hmm. you decide you're gonna shoot a body down or you can there's a the game has a ton of variety and options i decided to try and shoot a body down from a tree in order to do that my partner had to lend me his gun so that i could do that um but there is a part where and it oh, was, that's when you can shoot him it, yeah. There was a part where the partner turns to you and he's like, look, I understand you're going through some stuff. You don't remember a lot of things. I've given you a lot of leeway so far. And then he just flat out tells you, and he says, get your shit together. <laughs> and, then, and then he walks away. And I was like, oh, you know what? The game's finally acknowledging this. Maybe now I'm into it, but that's where I stopped. Are playing. you trying to play Paragon? 
Like, is there I think I am. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Is I'm trying so like, to play. That's the moment where I shoot my partner and then frame it on on somebody else. I wow. think that's my issue is I'm not leaning enough into being the scumbag that it's well, telling me to be. Maybe maybe you don't have to. Maybe you don't have to. I'm not saying no. you should. I just <laughs> I just like I don't know. When I when I heard some of that stuff about Outer Wilds and with this game, I like playing Renegades, so it's I'm just like I feel like I'm nice in real life, so it's fun yeah. to be a bad guy, but yeah. I, that's what I should do when I play these games, but I can't do it. I have to be uh, nice. Renegade Mass Effect is the best because you're still like a hero. It's not like you're just a criminal. Right. It's just, you're just such a dick, you're more You're a fascist dictator. Yeah. And you're like, I'm here to save the world and all your chatters are getting in my way. So stop talking or I shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> like, the stuff you should be saying should be things to help me on my mission. If it's not, you're wasting my time. I get racked with guilt in games if I do if I go those directions. So I, I always I try. Sometimes. Did you punch a reporter? Did you punch a reporter? Uh, in the, uh, no, I, I didn't. In Mass Effect, I punched about? the reporter. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, I, I, I was a paragon, but I punched the reporter. I punched the <laughs> I punched the reporter. She's that bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I that did. One out of two paragons punched her in the face too. I don't think I did. I think I. I don't remember what the result was of not punching her. How, how did that go? It, punching I think, her, I mean, you just got renegade points in the first two games. I think if you chose not to punch her in the third game, yeah. you actually got something for it. It was like she learned a lesson and you earned something in the game for not punching her. Oh, and but, if you punch her, she there's an assassination attempt or something. I think I remembered that there was some retribution because she ended up killing her. Mm. Like oh, you I get, don't know. I, you get tired of punching her, or somebody kills her. <laughs> it ends in death if you go renegade. I'm pretty sure for her because I remember there being a new reporter. Jeez. Yeah, I didn't punch yeah. her in three. I punched her in one. Something I punched like her in two. I left her alone in three, thinking, you know what? It's the final game. Let's give her some leeway. And there was some big like benefit I got for going Paragon in the third game, but there was no repercussions for punching her in the first two. Yeah. She'd it learn. also depends if you play a dude character or femshep because if you play femshep i feel it feels a little less like oh. misogynistic violence yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true You're like well i'm a girl so i can hit another girl it's great yeah. <laughs> like, wow yeah that was maybe yeah, that's part a of good it. point. The the optics of it are a little different if you're like dude Shep and she's just like, Can I interview you? And he's just like, Wham smacks her in the <laughs> Plus the way I made my shepherd, he was so like facially disfigured because I screwed around with the <laughs> configured stuff. So he looked like a big <laughs> You like the hunchback of Notre Dame. He looked terrible. So him punching a girl just seemed like, dude, who are you to talk? You should be punched for your nasty face. <laughs> you guys are like, Oh, I'm the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Please help uh, me. It's pretty embarrassing. Anyway. Oh, it's awesome. I like it. Bo anyway, Disco Elysium, oh. I tentatively recommend it. I recommend it wholeheartedly to Bo. Scott, you might like it. You might struggle with it. I don't. It's, I, it's I a lot a of reading, isn't it? it? Like lots and lots of reading, mm -hmm. like tons of reading. Wait, it's not voice acted? It's voice acted for a lot of it, but I would okay. say probably 70% voice acted. Well, yeah. That's not bad. That's yeah, it's not bad. I just, it seems like a lot to read. <laughs> and he's voice like acting good? Yeah, voice yeah. acting's good. It's it's weird. It's funny. It, it has made me laugh, but it's it's just tricky. There was a thing with a bookstore and a lady was like, don't go back there. You're a customer. Buy something. <laughs> I was like, what's, I was like, what's in the back? The little girl out front told me there was a curse. And she's like, there's no curse. Just don't go in the back. And I was like, well, I'm a police officer. I'm going to go in the back. And she was like, don't go in the back and i was like what are you gonna do i'm a police officer so i went i went back there and it turns out there was a curse and like a friggin' spirit escaped out of the back and was released upon the world and i was like oh well yeah, there was i went back out and she's like did you let it out and i'm like yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't feel well, great about well, it really do, it really does sound like playing D, &D <laughs> with me yeah well that, the, the other comparison mm. i've heard is that there's it's like D, &D in that it seems like you can just do anything like you can hmm. make any kind of choice and there'll be repercussions, but you can do it. Like a lot of games fool you into thinking choice matters, but I guess this game is really good at doing that. Right, well, but you but played, uh, the, you played the league of legends a little. That's that surprised me to hear that a little. I played a lot. I think I'm up to 30, 40 games this week. Jeez. Does that mean you've I mean, not 30, 40. Well, I, it's probably an exact number, but it's it's a lot. I've been marathoning it pretty hard since Monday. Is the is the divorce 
papers are in then i mean are you, is this it you're it's all back to well league i played and... some i played some heroes and like you know I just have to log in enjoy the heroes but like every quick match when you're solo queuing these days it's first a four or five stack mm-hmm. and it got a little and it wasn't just one day it was a couple of days of logging in playing and it's it's just hopeless the game is heavily favored towards team composition so if you're solo queuing i want to play with solo queuers in a quick match yeah. So I just got kind of bummed out. I'm just like, it's fun, but I'm like, I'm not having that much fun uh, towards the end when I know the outcome of every game I'm playing. Mm-hmm. And I was haunted by the thought of, uh, is there lower population in this game? You know, mm-hmm. and Blizzard in the news with after the Blitzchung thing. I was like, maybe pe- pe- less people are playing Heroes now as a result. So I'm like, I want to play just a game. I just want to do something different. Yeah. And I was like, oh, let me try. Let me lo- install League of Legends and, <laughs> and play forty pay games. tribute to China. And forty and, games are a lot because the game's averages are what thirty five to forty five minutes. Well, uh, so the game is still the same, but the game was always good. Mm-hmm. And um, they've there's a lot of stuff that's improved. I mean, five years difference between when I last seriously played. Mm-hmm. A lot of new quests, gotten a lot of free stuff, gotten the free to play loop. You know, like play another game every innovation that heroes has is except for the 20 minute game and ease of play for quote casuals is in there there's master runes have been changed to pretty much the talent system i mean the item shops a talent system but there's mastery levels their mastery system is actually way cooler than what heroes does like they've taken it and they've shined that up you've got to get an earn an s rank on a match to get a champion chest right off the bat boom and each season you have to do that on different heroes so it encourages you to play different heroes and try to master them mm. uh in order to get you know your free hero chests and your progression but there's a progression in addition on top of it they have infinite levels just like you know count levels just like they do in heroes now there's all kinds of stuff that that's different uh, in the game and the polish on the client uh, is, is really good. So, yeah, you know, it's still the same old game. It's a 10 year old game. It's kind of a con that, <laughs> that they make so much money and are so popular considering just how little sheer content there is. It's like, it's a map. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like the opposite of a world of Warcraft. It's like a park of Warcraft, um, a park you know, of like, Warcraft. yeah. Like, it's just crazy they make more money. But when I think about all the sheer content that Blizzard puts out every two years versus, like, we made three heroes in this, you know, I'm just like, man, it's such a ripoff. But, like, um, it's a free-to-play game, and it's fun. And anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the change of pace. I'm not, like, divorcing heroes, but uh, I'm actually winning games and got to hyper-carry a few games because, you know, you get fed. It feels really good. Like, imagine you're playing Rainer, and you could kill something in three auto attacks. Wow. Yeah, but... Uh, last... You never get that You never get that feeling. I mean, League is a selfish game, but you never get that feeling playing Heroes. Yeah, that's true. But but you... I mean, the, you got to pay attention to that freaking last hit garbage, and oh, I hate that stuff. So yeah, bad. I mean, that's... I mean, to me, that's fun. Like, I do enjoy that part of the game as well, but I don't... Like, it's not, it's not to say one is better than the other. They just both offer different pleasing rewards one of the things i like is no mounts because strategic decisions are just more impactful Mm -hmm. uh you can't just everyone you know get four people to mount up and go to a lane and respond to a threat it's like you pretty much have to take it in the teeth if you've made a poor strategic decision so i kind of like those that aspect of the game sure yeah i mean it's pros and cons to both you know but i i've been enjoying it this week and i've been going kind of hard on it so nice or Hard on the paint. You were going yeah. hard on the paint. Hard Got on it. the paint. <laughs> uh, uh, what else? Oh, I guess yeah, you have here a list of games you didn't play. I mean, I bought a bunch <laughs> of games, but like, a big I don't have time. Like, I, my TV watching and game watching is so like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I buy games, I plan on watching TV, and I don't do any of it partially because I'm playing League of Legends, and that's just all I'm doing right now. So, right, right. yeah. Well, you got, very, you, uh, you wrote these. But I just thought I'd put it in here. I bought Disco Elysium and I bought two Stellaris X packs. I don't know when I'll have time to play, but I just love Stellaris. Stellaris is awesome. It made me want to play it again when I saw it in your list here. I love that game, and I'm terrible at it. I'm very bad at planning out what to do in that game, but I really I mean, like it. When I when I bought them, I bought them and I booted up the game and was on the first year turn. Mm-hmm. 
And then I was like, oh, I'm tired. And I just fell asleep. And <laughs> Did you go, I'm tired, and then just conk right there? Like, right there? Not, in the, not in the chair, but okay. I, I went up. I went up, and my bed looked comfortable, and I laid down. I'm like, let me close my eyes for... Yeah. And just you know, left, left the game on, and I just slept. That's <laughs> yeah, that's all that happened. But I really love Stol- Stellaris. I always keep that installed, and always think about that game. Dude, there's nothing wrong with Stellaris. Stellaris is a quality video game. Uh, well, that's gonna do it for today's show. We uh, had a good one. Sorry, everybody it came so late in the week. That was my fault. I threw my back out and still killing me, but it's a little better today. Kind of can't move too quick if I go this direction. <gasps> oh, you guys should feel that. It's like right down the spine. Feel it from here. Ugh. Why are you deliberately hurting yourself right now at the end of the show? Because part of it hurts, but part of it's a good stretch, like a good, uh-huh. uh, you know, like sometimes pain is pl- pleasure. <laughs> well, you're feeling uh, it to see where it is. I mean, we learned I a lot tonight, folks. Right. <laughs> I think it's like your, I think it's your curiosity impulse. I know when you do, you're like, ow, ow, but you want to see just how far you can move. Yeah, how far can I take it? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's been uh, real fun hanging out with everybody. Thank you for being here. Don't forget, yeah. you can support us on our Patreon at patreon.com slash core show. That's patreon.com slash core show. We can find the show at frogpants.com slash core. And if you're looking for Twitter accounts, boy, oh boy, do I have good news for you. Core pod, John underscore Jagger, Scott Johnson, and Bo Schwartz. That's going to do it for us. For me, for Bo, for John. Uh, what other thing I was going to say? That's it. For me, for both, for John, we'll see you next time. Toodles. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, China. Yeah, goodbye, China. Hello, what? China. Oh, Whoa, we're already back to hello. <laughs> hello, China. Ooh. How about this, China? I thought Mike Morheim joined the call. How about this one? This is an annoying one. China. Yeah, that's annoying. China. Uh, how about this one? Let's do... Wait. Hello, China. Oh, no, that's just hello, China on its own. Uh, how about vagina? Vagina. China. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vagina.